Hi, my name is Caitlin. You are now listening to Ute Reach Radio. This morning we will have an interview with Grania, a teacher here at Gorey Ute Reach. Where are you from, Grania? Um, I'm from Wexford Town. What is your favourite film? My favourite film? Oh, that's an interesting one. Let me see. It'll have to be a bit of mob, mafia action, Goodfellas, Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Very good. Do you have any pets? Do I? I do. I have a dog called Harry Potter, which is actually my sister's dog. He's a King Charles Cavalier, but he lives with me. What's your reason for becoming a school teacher? For becoming a school teacher, um, I originally started working in the outdoors in adventure centres, and I loved teaching people how to kayak or teaching them the skills um, in the outdoors. But I felt that I could do some more sort of teaching and bring some of those skills into the classroom. So of teaching mainstream schools. So what I learned of how to teach outdoors, I bring into how I teach now. Great. <coughs> what music do you like most? Uh, a broad range. If you listen to my playlist, you would think I was a very mixed up sort of person. <laughs> it goes from rock and roll to bluegrass to a bit of pop. Um, yeah, love lots of things. A bit of Stevie Wonder, a bit of jazz, things like that. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have two older brothers and a younger sister. They're all married. I have seven nieces and nephews. Yeah. Wow. Busy. What's your first job when you were younger? My first job was waitressing in the local hotel. I got paid two pounds an hour. I know. Oh, God. Yeah. What was your least favourite job? Uh, waitressing in a local hotel for <laughs> two pounds an hour. It was a tough one because it was a small hotel. So I used to, and the owners were a bit... Uh, shall we say, um, hit and miss. So sometimes I'd go in and I'd end up having to open up the hotel. I'd have to set up for lunch, check guests out. Someone mightn't have turned up to cook breakfast, so I used to have to cook the breakfast, serve the breakfast, basically for two pounds an hour. So, yeah, that was a tough gig. Good thing the times have changed. Yeah, absolutely. If you could go anywhere on holiday, where would you go? Um, my um, top of my list at the moment is an Antarctic cruise. I'd love to kind of retrace the steps where Shackleton went back in 1914 down around there. But uh, I need to get about 10 grand together to do that. So, you know, someday, someday. someday yeah. What was your favourite book when you were younger? When I was younger? Oh, God. What's popped into my head is kind of the teenage years. I used to read a lot of Judy Bloom. I don't know, do people know Judy Bloom? There was one called, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. <laughs> it was about this kid who was about 12 or 13, and I guess I was the same age when I was reading it, and it was all about, you know, those hard 12, her teenage angst years. So, yeah. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks very much, Granny, for your time. That's all we have time for. No problem. Thank you very much. Earlier in the week, we had our roaming reporter, Sahir, doing a vox pop around Gori, asking people about their summer so far. Well, the summer hasn't been great, really. I hope it improves. So it it's nice. I hope summer's more ducky and more hot. <laughs> OK. Good. Uh, not good. It's good. Um, so far, it's it's not too bad. It's not as nice as what it was last year, but we live in hope that the weather will improve. <laughs> the summer is good. Uh, the weather is really nice, uh, and uh, yeah, it's lots of nice things to do. Yeah, it's good so far. The weather is starting to pick up, so it's a lot nicer now. Typical Irish summer. So far, the weather has been not great, but hopefully it'll get better. It's lovely weather. What summer? It's been good. I drink lots of water. I don't like it. Well. It's perfect. Very good. Summer has been slow to arrive in Ireland this year, but we're getting there and it's getting hot now and the forecast is good for the weekend, so let's enjoy the sun and live it up, everybody. Um, I think that it started off okay, but there was a really cold wind, but the last few days have been really nice and it's sunny, but it's still a bit windy. I think the summer so far has been great. Uh, I enjoy pottering around in my back garden and the weather's been really good. Summer so far has been great. I can't wait until we're on our holidays and we get to go out and enjoy the sun. It's very hot. Summer is great. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm after being to Lanzarote for one week. It's been bad so far. It's been one yet, has it? First day today. Good. Very good. When it's warm, I'm happy. Nothing. Thank you, Sahir, for that Vox Pop. 
Now we have an interview with Patrick, Liam and Dara about gaming. Uh, so Liam, uh, what games are you interested in? Uh, well, in terms of games I play, there's Black Ops 2, occasionally a bit of Apex Legends. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch lately, though. Uh, so you like shooters? Yeah. Uh, so uh, how did you get introduced to these type of games? Honestly, when I first picked up Black Ops 2 back on 360, oh. I picked up it because everyone seemed to be playing it, and from that moment, I just love shooters. Although, I do also like a few arcades. Oh, that was good. Uh, so there, what is your favourite game? Fortnite. Fortnite, alright. Yeah. Uh, why is this game your favourite in particular? Uh, because it's the funnest. Alright. Uh, what console do you normally play on? PlayStation 4. Uh, why do you play on that? Because it's better than Xbox. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam, what is your least favourite game? Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> Uh, why is that? Because, to put it nicely, I completely hate the game. Oh. Every aspect of it I see either as a copy or just something I don't like. Fair enough. Uh, when did you first start the game? <sighs> I first got it back in... I think it was when it was on season 3 or 4. And I played it for a while and then I just saw it to hate. Thanks boys for that interview. This morning, another one of our roaming reporters, Mohammed, was asking people about their thoughts on the traffic in Gori. It's bad. You can't, can't go anywhere with it. Well, I think it's um, a little bit bad, especially on Fridays. Um, well, I start work quite early, so when I'm coming in, the traffic isn't too bad. But I do notice that if I have to drive around Gory around lunchtime or in the early evening, traffic can be quite hef- heavy, particularly along the main street and trying to get out of town. Traffic in Gory is OK, although it can be very busy at certain times during the day. But on a whole, it's OK. Compared to Dublin, go up to Dublin, you'll know what traffic is. Very busy, very free-flowing. It can be really be really bad. It's really bad on the main street. Really bad. Desperate. It's bad considering I get the train. It's busy. It's pretty busy. It's very busy. It's very jammed trying to get down the road. Traffic is bad sometimes. It's bad. Uh, it's been better since the bypass opened up. That's about my only thought. I avoid Gory because I hate the traffic up at the crossroads and I'm waiting there for ages so I usually go around the back roads. It gets really bad and really backed up most of the time and the crosswalks don't go often enough for people to cross the roads. There's a lot of jaywalking and it can get kind of dangerous around with lots of cars. Um, It's very bad. The traffic in the town is really, really bad, especially at the traffic lights. It's very busy. Um, Outside the town it's okay, but going up to school it's very, very busy as well. Thank you, Mohammed, for that report. Now we have an interview with Patrick and Kasim about Syria. Did you like living in Syria? Oh, uh, yes. What types of food did you eat in Syria? I ate food Arabic, Mlukhiya, uh, Zatar, Mashi, Bamiya. Okay. How long have you lived in Ireland? I was here like two years. How did you get to Ireland? I come from Turkish to Greece and from Greece to Ireland. Very good. Yeah. How do you how did you decide to come to Ireland? Why did you decide? Because we have war in Syria and uh, we have problem in Syria. I come to Ireland for safe, you know. Yes, yes. Do you prefer Irish food or Syrian? No, Syrian. Syrian. Yes. <laughs> what sport did you play in Syria? I play football. Uh I do swimming. Very good. Yes. Uh, thank you, Kasim. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick and Kasim, for that report. We have Brian and Billy from Ballygarrett playing a poker called The Green Cottage here with us today.
thanks Brian and Billy for that piece of music. That's all I have time for today. Thanks for listening. Patrick will be back for more after the break. This is a warning for the future. Skycrack has taken over and has started mass producing attack dogs to destroy the human race. And sadly, the resistance is losing the battle for life. Our last hope is Terminal Duck. We have sent and hidden him under the alias of a student in place to protect our and your future leader. He is our last hope. Skycrack will fall. Coming soon on DVD. Hi, my name is Patrick, and we are back with Eerie's Radio. It's looking lovely outside, so why not put on your swim gear and go for a swim? We've got a few things planned for today, like an interview with Robbie McCabe, the terrifying principal of Eerie's. We are also going to have Abby say some of her words of wisdom. Yes, you did hear me right. How are you today? I'm really good, uh, Carmel. I'm very well. And where are you um, from? So I'm originally from Tipperary, um, but I moved to Wexford about eight months ago, and uh, I'm living in Wexford now. Lovely. And did you like living in Tipperary? Well, I lived in Tipperary from w- when I was like young until I was 18, and I moved out of home when I was 18, so I moved to loads of different places all over the country. Lovely. And how long have you been working in the youth reach? So this will be my sixth year in the youth reach in total. Um, it's my first year here in Gory youth reach. But prior to this, I worked in Dublin. And um, what did you like always want to do? Is this what you always wanted to do? Um, well, yes and no, of course. Um, when I was younger, I wanted to be a movie star and a famous singer, but uh, alas, that didn't happen. And then I got the opportunity to teach in a summer camp, and I really, really liked it. And then from there, I got to teach in loads of different secondary schools. And uh, I have decided then that I like teaching in youth reach the best. And um, do you like teaching all the students and everything? I do. I do. The best thing that I like teaching uh, young people and students is that you learn so much from them. So for me as a teacher, I can teach some some things, but I love the fact that I can learn so much as well. So that's really important to me. And um, and have you ever been um, interviewed like on a radio station? Is this your first time? No, it's not my first time, <laughs> but I have been interviewed a few times before, yes. Um, but yeah, you're doing a great job and you should be very proud. Thank you. And are you nervous about the interview? I'm not really that nervous about the interview because you're very calming and you're very good at <laughs> us. And I know that everybody here has been working hard to get yeah. this interview really yeah. well. And um I think that's all. So okay. thank you very much for talking to us today. No problem at all. My pleasure. Thanks, Carmel. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Carmel and Priscilla, for your time. But now we have Kasim interviewing Caitlin, talking about her thoughts on Reach. How was your day? My day was really good. Oh, good. What are your ha- happiness? I do horse riding. What things do you do like? Um, I like horses. Camping. And what is your favorite subject? Um, my favorite subject is engineering. What do you do in your spare sport time? Spare sport. Um, I go f- for walks with my dog, and I go out to my friends. How many dogs you have? Five. Oh, just do you have dogs? No, any animals in your home? Five dogs, two ducks, two chickens, two fish and a hamster. Oh, good, good. Uh, thank you, Kathleen, for speaking. And thank you very much. Thanks, Kasim. Thank you very much, Kasim and Caitlin, for that interview. Now we have time for Robbie McKay being interviewed by Sahir. Hi, Robbie, how are you? How are you, how are you Sahir? Good. I want to ask you a few question. First, the question is, uh, what made you 
interested in working at Withreach? Well, I suppose I hear uh, I've been involved in education for about uh, 20, 21 years. So um, I've been working in Dublin. I've been working in, uh, uh, in within Waterford and Escorthy and around uh, the East Coast uh, teaching for the last 20 years. And I've been teaching people, um, young people during that period. And the opportunity came up to start a new youth reach in Gorey. Um, that was three years ago. So um, I live locally. Um, it's something that I was interested in, so I decided that it was worth applying for. So I applied for it and I uh, got the job, and that's that's basically how I ended up in Youth Reach. Good. Next question. How did you get into working in education? Well, working in education, I was I was actually I was actually a student, and I was um, I was I was learning computers, and we had a teacher who was who missed a few classes and uh, I was asked to take those classes and um, that went well and then the person who was actually running it asked me to did I want to come in as in further education trainer so I came when I started there and I was there for a few months and then I joined I joined um, FOSS external training uh, which was uh, which was teaching uh, uh, trades and um, that type of thing so I got involved I got involved in that and I did that for seven years and then I moved to what they call a, lo a local training initiative which was teaching uh, people in uh, within the community um, uh, uh, different skills. It was uh, targeting uh, areas where there was where th where there was a lack of skills. So I got involved in that, and I just sort of enjoyed it. And that's what then led me on to uh, being here uh, teaching youth reach. Okay. Okay. Next question: If you weren't working in education, what do you think you would be working as? I don't know. When I left school, I started. I, st I, I was training as a, um, I was I was trained as a printer, and then I went into sort of computers. So I'd say I'd say I probably would have been something to do with computers if I had a, if if I hadn't gone to education. On your what are your thoughts on the summer project? The summer project, yeah, it's hard for the students because you you have to stay in here for another six weeks when a lot of your friends and stuff will be on will be on holidays. We try to make it as interesting as possible for you and bring like the likes of this, uh, uh, creating a radio station or a radio program. Um, we like to do a lot of outings and that type of thing to so make it different to um, uh, to the normal, okay? Because it is a summer project; it has to be different. So I think it's a good idea in one respect that it's that it does it does it does introduce you to different things. Like we're we've organised a good few trips. Like you're going to uh, th there's an awful lot of outdoor activities organised mixing with other groups so it can be very positive but yet again the, p the biggest thing is trying to get the young people are motivated to get them actually to come into into um into classes during the, during the week when they're when their friends are on holidays that can be difficult okay next question how did you how did the summer project become i think um well there's just been a review done of the uh, uh, of um of youth reaches uh, throughout the country and it's come out quite positively out of that um, uh, youth reaches have have a, have a very strong purpose. They were started 30 years ago, and I suppose during that time, it was it fell into it fell into what they call further education. So it was slightly different to say schools, which meant that the year was longer. So uh, and then if you look at if you look at like the leaving cert, and they they finish in June. So for those sort of six seven weeks, they had to do something slightly different. So. I, I suppose th at that stage they would have decided, okay, we're going to do a summer project, and th that's and that's um, and that's where the summer job project came. So where where we have a, a certain amount of days th that we have to teach, and in order to actually achieve that, we have to work up until the 18th of July. So we have to uh, we we have to provide a summer project. So that's that's basically how it actually how, how it actually came to be. You are born to be real, not to be perfect and you're happy when you feel good about yourself so why do you care about other people's approval thank you for the inspirational speech abby okay that's all we have time for i just want to thank the producers for their efforts i also want to thank caitlin for making a big effort all the students for their interviews robbie priscilla grania abby for the great speech and everyone who made this possible come back next week same time friday at two o'clock for all the banter this being great you treat peace out on praises.